President Buhari, Muhammad Buhari requests to, request to the National Assembly for a fresh $800 million loan from the World Bank has continued to puzzle Nigerians. The president said the money is essential to address issues attendant to a planned withdrawal of subsidy on petroleum products which has since been jettisoned. Adebayo Omolara brings you this report. Now, in the return, 800 million words, 800 million words, dollar or naira, you change it to naira. President Mohamed Buhari has claimed the loan he seeks from the Senate would be utilized to scare up the National Social Safety Net Program. In the loan approval request, President Mohamed Buhari said the facility was an extension of the unconditional cash transfer being implemented by the government. Many are puzzled over the request. Less than 20 days now to leave the office. So what is the loan for? So it looks suspicious. And he, the National Assembly should not grant him the loan. I think that's my own opinion. It's a joke. A joker. I think he's a joker. What will he do with 800 million in a few days to leave office? An outgoing president who does not really have what to do with 800 million dollars. You are simply going to make the next uh, administration make things very difficult for them. I don't think it's a good idea. Because what's, what he's trying to do now, he won't be the one to suffer it. The, our children are the ones that will suffer it in future. If the children that are coming up are the people we should be feeling for. So I don't think it's a good idea at all. So far we have been, we have been in debt as a nation. We have been hearing of Buhari going to other countries to borrow money. Is it that we cannot even stand on our own as a country yet? Even after several years of independence, we have a lot of means through which we can generate income, but yet it's not forthcoming. So why would you want to go and borrow money, take a loan of such a huge amount? For what? Despite securing debt relief during the Olusegun Obasanjo led administration, successive governments have continued to borrow in spree. The federal government component of the public debt surging 658% to 26.9 trillion naira in the last 21 years. This has raised concerns among Nigerians on the sustainability of the debt given the country's dwindling revenue. When you say borrow, borrow is not a language that is like you, you never hear it before. You, you never hear it for the past eight years. Many, 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 many. Vela is my daughter's father. I say, I'm many, I'm many, I'm many, I'm many, I'm many. I'm many one call, I'm many one here when you want to talk. If really the loan has been of relevance, we would have known where we are today. So why are we in a mess as a country? We are in so much mess. He has brought us into a mess. Should we continue like this? In July 7, 2021, the upper chamber approved a loan request of 2.343 trillion naira, approximately $6 billion, and another $8.3 billion and 490 million euro. As of March 2021, Nigeria's total public debt has hit 33.1 trillion naira approximately to 87.24 dollars an accumulating of borrowing from successive governments of which most were borrowed since the return to democratic rule the lagos chamber of commerce and industry has criticized the decision of the federal government to suspend the planned removal of subsidy for pet for premium motor spirit pop commonly preferred as petrol. A statement signed by its Director General Chinyere Alumna said the chamber was concerned about the huge cost of petrol subsidy over the years and its implications on social and infrastructural developments. According to the chamber, there is a great and urgent need for the government to thoroughly evaluate its economic realities and adequately put plans and measures in place to mitigate the negative consequences of subsidy removal on Nigerians in the short term. It noted that the delay will have significant implications for the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act, which may require amendments. According to the chamber, 
the government needs to focus on the completion of the turnaround maintenance of local refineries as well as ensure that well-equipped modular refineries are empowered and supported. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria on Thursday said Nigerians looking forward to improve electricity supply may continue to wait as the dismal nature of the power sector may not change anytime soon. Pengerton outlined several reasons why Nigeria's power supply situation would not improve in the near future, stressing that this was despite the economic significance of electricity to the country. The association president, Festus Osifo, who disclosed this at the 7th Tridio National Delegate Conference of Pengasin in Abuja, also warned the federal government against selective implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. Commenting on the power crisis in Nigeria, Osifo said although electricity is considered a major determinant of economic development as access to electricity is expected to catalyze nations in the drive for industrialization, supply to homes and businesses, this has remained abysmal in Nigeria on the backdrop of a flawed privatization exercise. Osifo pointed out that the power sector was currently grappling with a severe debt burden, adding that the poor foreign exchange rate situation in the country was halting the adequate acquisition of tools to run the electricity supply industry. Poised to combat gender-based violence with every two in the box, the United Nations Women and the European Union Spotlight Initiative have pledged support in their various capacities during the launch of a private sector gender-based violence fund in Lagos. The initiative, which is a brainchild of women in successful careers, played host to high-profile personalities drawn across private and public sectors in the country. The fund aims to provide a resource pool to ensure ample support to victims and survivors of gender-based violence. In her opening remarks, founder and chairperson of the group, Amina Oyagbola, described gender-based violence as a pandemic and a dark shadow that has left devastating consequences on Nigerian society. According to the gender-based violence is a serious violation of one's fundamental human right. Hence, any society that turns a blind eye to it fails to uphold the imperative ideal of human dignity. The federal government spent $112.35 million servicing external debt in January 2023. Data from the Central Bank of Nigeria's weekly international payments showed that the amount spent in January was 146.17% higher than the $45.64 million spent in December 2022. These occurred as the federal government struggled to boost its revenue base despite its revenue generation efforts. The federal the Federal Account Allocation Committee shared 750.17 billion naira among three tiers of government in January 2023. The figure represents a decrease of 240.02 billion naira compared to the 990.19 billion naira shared in December 2022. In 2022, Nigeria spent $2.4 billion to service its external debt, which was a slight increase from the $2.11 billion spent in 2021. The Niger Delta Development Commission has loaded the Senate over moves to probe the agency's account from 2021 to 2022 for illegal spending of 1.4 trillion naira. In a statement by the Commission Director of Corporate Affairs, Ibitoye Abosede, on Thursday, the agency appreciated the concerns expressed by the Senate during its plenary on Tuesday. It would be recalled that the Senate had its session on Tuesday constituted an ad hoc committee to probe the financial activities of the NDDC for 2021 and 2022 budget estimates. 
The Senate also stood down consideration of the 2023 budget of the NDDC for further information and clarification on the figures contained in the budget. The NDDC, in a statement, said it respected the oversight functions of the Senate and was ready to cooperate with the investigation committee.